Good afternoon from New York and welcome to another edition of CWS As It Is. This is the first part of a five-part series on Guyanese youth in business. The question I begin with is, is there an obligation on the part of the government or successful business owners to reach back or down and empower or help young people get started or grow their business? And if so, what would that help look like? The next question I'm asking is, shouldn't we be encouraging them to create the jobs they seek or push their entrepreneurial efforts? We speak of change of a Project Guyana with an aim of moving Guyana forward. There are many battles to be fought in this war and stagnation, and all of us cannot be in the same battle. But I believe we can achieve some traction if we choose to participate in our fullest, to our fullest extent. However, the nation needs to invest in empowering all of its talents in order to sustain its push for economic growth and global competitiveness. Many are stressing entrepreneurship. So we ask, why an entrepreneurship-driven economy? There's no disguising the phenomenal scale of work, commitment, and seriousness that needs to be inputted before Guyana can lay claim to being entrepreneurship-driven. It demands a complete change of culture and attitude. Well, I have invited several young entrepreneurs to launch this five-part series on Guyanese youth and business. I'll ask them to share their ideas, goals, and vision with us. They are smart, innovative, young people, they, they are doing something with what they have from where they are. The question is, how do we encourage them? I'll take a short break. Like this, you don't know what is out there for you. You don't know what is tomorrow. So when you get there, it's you and the moment and all the tools that you have in possession to help you to actually get to the other level. So it's like a staircase. So tell me something. Before you got started, what were you doing? What were some of your thoughts? Can you hear me? Can you um, hear me? Before I got started, uh -huh. I was a little bit scared to get this over with. And my fear is one of the key drivers because everything that I came in contact with, I was scared of. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to get to the next level. But this thing is so scary. I need to overcome this fear and I need to get to this level. It's like when you're gaming, you know, and you want to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of enthusiasm coming, coming there as well. All right. I, I, I know I promised to get into the business, but you mentioned something that is key to any endeavor, yes. uh, something that blocks so many of us, fear. How did you manage your fear to get, to get, how did you get past your fear to get to the point where you actually started this business and decide to promote this business or market it to others? Okay. Um, one of my lecturers, Malcolm Williams, always say this to me, all is well, and your fear is just a state of mind. It, it is not real. It doesn't exist. It is your mind that creates it. So every time I'm in a, a block or something, I tell myself all is well. I always keep telling myself that all is well. I'm gonna move on. This is not going to be forever. You're gonna get to the next level. And when I reach there, I feel very much accomplished. Awesome. So tell us about Trifinity Solutions and, and how you came up with that name. Okay. Trifinity Solutions surrounds itself of three guys that actually supported me throughout my university life. And coming up with the name Trifinity, I wanted it I wanted this to be forever. That's why you have infinity. And the three guys, if you carefully look at my logo, the three guys are actually the ring. And they are Malcolm uh, Williams, um, Eldon Marks, and the ring Renat. Mm. And where do you see, describe Trifinity for us a little bit. What does it do? What is it all about? Okay, Trifinity Solutions is all about offering uh, business solutions in the area of mobile app development, desktop application, and web solutions. 
when you first got started, what were some of your challenges? Um, when I first got started, the only thing that um, I had in possession was the knowledge and the know-how how to get stuff done. And it was very difficult for me to actually incorporate some of the business techniques and languages. Over the years, um, I sort of worked with uh, um, persons like Rosh and the entrepreneur group in the University of Guyana Department of Computer Science. And we started to get together over time and we would look at things like business plans um, and other business documents, marketing strategies and so forth. What However, I'm still, I'm still getting there. You mentioned years. How long ago, how long have you started this business? Um, about two years ago. Two years ago. So yeah. when you... When you first started, or, or you know what? Why don't you tell us about an app that you might have, that you, that you built or you're working okay, one, on? One of the apps that I would have worked on is the Frontline News app. And this app sort of auto-populates all the latest news onto your news feed. So you don't have to go looking for an event or something that just occurred. So when the when the a reporter would normally update the site, you would get the the report immediately. Hmm. You know. And and who are who are some people that use this app? Um, it's mostly persons who are out there in the morning, or reading daily news, and persons who are actually um, serving the the. The audience, which is the, which is in the Guyanese diaspora. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your process. Um, someone comes to you, say, "Look, we need a we need an app. You know, we just want to build an app, um, or we want to build a website. But let's let's work with an app. What are you looking to ask them? What are you looking to find out from them? Okay, so the first thing um, I would ask someone is that okay. So you want an app, you want to develop an app. Um, what is your audience? Who are your audience? From there, I, I would go about trying to find out um, what is it they're looking for? What are the key components? What are the, what are the functionality that they're looking to actually use out there to drive or to create some form of connection within their business and their audience? From there on, we'll develop, we'll, develop a um, requirement analysis and we'll give them a proposal and we'll take it from there. Once they're interested in our um, proposal, um, we do all the other necessary steps which involve payments and so forth and then we move on with development. From there on, we'll actually um, start a development and we'll work with the, the client, making sure that they're happy, they're satisfied, this is what they're looking for. Because at the end of the day, I, I, I'm one of the persons who are actually, you know, very much on the edge of getting my customers satisfied in terms of getting exactly what they want. The what, kind of perfectionist. Why is that so important to you? Why is that important to me? Um, their business that they're actually serving, uh, they're actually serving their customer. I want to be a part of it to make it more user friendly for their customer because at the end of the day, the customer is all that matters. The customer is the person that is actually helping you to pay your bills and so forth. So tell me, what happens if you get a, a job um, that requires yeah. a certain kind of skill set that you might, you personally might not have? What happens then? Well, I'll have to actually source it from the environment that I'm actually working in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't only work with my organization alone. There are other tech hubs like version 75 and so forth that I work with. So if it may happen that I don't have the expertise here, I'll just say, okay, hey guys, I need your service. This is what I need from you because not everything we can build. 
Okay. And it starts to bring this community field with us because we're all we're all working in the uh, computer programming industry, and someday we'd like to see Guyana on top of the map. You know, I I I, I am going to well, I don't like to use the term devil's advocate, but I'm going to ask you this. There is talk sometimes that, um, you know, young people are so disjointed, they don't really get along, they're, they're, they fight one another on this and on that. But here you are, not even 30 yet, own your own business, and you are able to collaborate with other young people. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little um, bit about... Okay. Collaboration and community effort is one of the key drivers towards development. We can't do this alone. I don't think I can do this alone. I certainly need my brothers and sisters with me to actually help to move to the next level. So to me, community spirit and togetherness and the love and the excitement and all the enthusiasm that we share, it's, it's a wonderful learning experience as well, I can tell you. What, what, what encourages you to keep going when the going gets tough, Samantha? My struggles. My struggles that I've had many, many years ago. Mm. And wanting an education and not being able to afford it, I don't want to ever be going back to that level or that stage anymore. And I've come too far. I see. And so, where do you see Trifinity Solutions in 10 years? What is your vision? Okay. In 10 years, I'm looking at serving the Caribbean and North America. So, in these areas of website design uh -huh. and development, how, how can people find you? Okay, Parsons can find me on trifinitysolutions.com. Um, that's our website, uh, www.trifinitygy.com. Or you can email us at contact us at trifinitygy.com. However, you can also find us on Facebook. I see. And what do you believe is your team's most valuable asset? You mentioned communication, you mentioned collaboration, and so on. But what do you think is your most valuable asset? What makes it work? What brings it all together for you? Passion. Passion. Ah. Passion. The passion within to get this work or get this done. The passion is our main driver. Tell us, tell us of an, a situation where you're working on this project and, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem to be coming together, but it is your passion that really pulled you through. Is there, was there ever a project like that? Yeah, I had projects like that. So I had a project recently we were working on and there were one of the components we couldn't get done. But we keep telling ourselves that, you know, you know, if someone out there can do it, we can very well do this as well. And that kept us going day and night, day and night, day and night. And the other thing is that when you are locked in there, it's like a meditative process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for days we would be locked in. We're not, we're not so much out there. I will lock myself away for days and I'll do designs and programming. No communication with anyone. And believe me, it's a very, 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 very calm moment. I, I sometimes feel like it makes me feel younger. It makes me feel so vibrant to program and, and, and design. Seriously. You see, when I'm, finished, when I'm finished with a website or when I'm finished with an app, I feel younger. So imagine when I get started, what would happen? Or or 50. So if, if, <laughs> if you could, um, how could, how could the government, the private sector, or anybody in the diaspora, how can, how can we be of help to your, um, to your effort? Certainly, they would have to present us with problems that they're, they're now experiencing or they're having in reaching out to their audience, to their community, 
And once they would have presented these problems or give us a chance to actually see what your system's like or probably a conversation or a talk or so, we can provide solutions there based on your requirement, based on how we actually assess your organization or your business to be. And mostly we can provide um, solutions in reaching out to your community, basically in web development, designs, and other business solutions like simple desktop applications and so forth. What is most rewarding about what you do? What's most rewarding about what I do? I can tell you it makes me happy. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel empowered. Uh, it's awesome. It's mind-blowing. I, I got to ask you this, Samantha. You, 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 have, you ever, first, have you ever worked for in this type of environment before in a company or so on? Have you ever worked in this capacity for an, an organization? I've applied to like about 50 different organizations before I started this company, but I was never successful. All right, good. So, so you've never actually worked in this environment, yet you have certain business acumen, certain um, business principle and so on. Where did this discipline come from? Um, this discipline would have come from working along with projects within the Department of Computer Science. Also, I would have been on the program uh, CBU, which I was fortunate um, to be selected by the, the back then Ministry of Youth, Culture and Sports to be a part. So they would have given us business assignments, and over a period of time, we would have had uh, we would have had certain training. And then we had to go out there and execute the training. And guess what? Our our group actually won the group won the best award in the Caribbean for making the most sales. Because it was like a hustle. We had to go in the city mall selling simple things like hot dog, simple things like a message to help persons out there to cope with depression and so forth. Congratulations. What would you say is the worst advice anybody has ever given you about about business? Ah, the worst advice. I don't think I ever came across the worst advice. Maybe I did, but um, I didn't pay, I didn't, I didn't look at it as the worst advice because sometimes when things are given to you, there are audience that might look at it as worse, but then when, when you're prone to certain critical thinking, you look for opportunity in Worst. Good answer, Samantha. I like that. Ha have you ever felt like quitting? Um, yes, I would like. I felt like quitting, but every time I felt like quitting, I'm, I was remembered why I started this. Mm -hmm. And so, do you think your mindset has anything to do with your success? Um, yes. Yeah, and and if if you have one word a one word advice you can give to other young people who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs, what would that advice be? Um, I would give them the advice to go ahead, start your business, create your dreams, because nobody else out there is going to create it for you. Nobody else out there is going to do it for you. You need to get up, get up, wake up that inside, wake up all those inner callings. Trample on your fears and go and get it done. <laughs> You're the master. Nobody else is the master. <laughs> I like that. Why would anybody, any organization, any company, anybody employ you or hire your company to do their work? Why would any organization hire us? Um, I mostly feel and I mostly would say that they would hire us because we have the expertise to get your work done and to meet your deadlines. I see. In, in the chat room, there is a Norka that says, kudos, kudos to her and I wish her well. Um, Samantha, well, if you could go back in time to the two, year, two years ago when you first started, um, what would you love to do in regards to your business? 
So, you want me to go back two years back? If you could, if you could go back in time to when yes. you first started, knowing what you know now, what would you love to do in regards to your business? I will learn a lot, learn more of business management skills. For the couple of minutes we have left, tell us a little bit of why that is so important. And if you were talking to the other young people listening in to you today, why is that so, not just skills, not just the skill set in what you do, not just being uh, adept at programming and understanding um, the, the language and so on, but why is business acumen, why is that so important? It is important because a product by itself needs some sort of channel to sell it. It needs some form of channel to promote it. I can have the best product here, but if I don't know how to sell this product, you think anybody is going to buy it? Nobody will. Nobody will want to buy your product if, you're not, if you don't know how to market it, how to sell it. Do you think anybody would want to buy into my idea if I say, you know, I can do X, Y, Z now and I can't explain to them or I can't tell them how I'm going to get this done and how it is important for you to support me? Is there anything in the pipeline that you would like to share with us, that you can share with us? Anything that um, you're working on? I have so on? much. Huh? I have so much. I have so much. <laughs> <laughs> but first and foremost, I would like to... I would like to let the audience out there know that there is no Thank you. Thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you for sharing your time with us. It was quite enjoyable. Have a good evening. You too.